Okay, I get asked fairly often about heat treating. So instead of uh, retyping it as an explanation in comments or whatever every time, I'm just going to make a video, a short video of um, heat treating, and I'm going to explain heat treatment with words. <laughs> okay, so um, many different things can be heat treated, different types of stone. Uh, they're called microcrystalline siliceous materials, and I'll just go through a list of uh, materials that I that I looked up and stuff. Um, chert, flint, agate, silcrete, jasper, petrified wood, quartzite, orthoquartzite, novaculite, silicified sandstone, agatized dolomite, or alabates. I know about this one because it's in Texas and surrounding areas. But this might not be a complete list, but if your material is on this list, it can be heat treated in most cases. Uh, stuff that cannot be heat treated is um, obsidian, rhyolite, uh, and other, other uh, stones that are not on this list. But I get questions on these two. Can I heat treat these two? And the answer is no. You do not respond to heat treating. Okay. So, um, if you look it up in the archaeological texts and articles and stuff, they call it intentional or controlled thermal alteration. So you can look up those keywords. They usually don't call it heat treatment, although they do in many cases. All right. And this is a very old technology. And, and I don't know why... But a lot of, it seems like a lot of times you encounter people that uh, are either ignoring the fact that it's a very old technology or they just don't know. And it's a mystery to me why they don't know. But there's evidence that it began in the Middle Paleolithic 110,000 years ago to 90,000 years ago before present. Okay, and I got that information from this particular article okay in the lithic technology i suppose that's a magazine or a publication volume 32 2007 okay now uh now what are the temperatures and what do you cook it in okay how do you cook stone well i cook stone in a turkey roaster uh, personally okay and it usually goes up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, right? And it has a lid. And it usually has a pan on the inside. Okay? What you want to do is remove that pan. It's a ceramic pan. Take that pan out, okay? It gives you more room on the inside. Also, you want to insulate the bottom of this lid with fiberglass insulation or insulation that's not flammable, rock wool, and so forth, okay? And I showed how to do this in a video, but basically you just take heavy-duty aluminum foil and you crimple up, you you know, you take a sheet of it, put the insulation down on the sheet, and then put the lid down on the sheet, and then you crimp the edges of the aluminum foil around the lip of the lid to hold the insulation in place. Now when you have this going, and you crank it up to 450 degrees or whatever, some insulation is going to outgas. Okay, just that's one thing. Rocks will outgas as well. So you want to do this in the ventilated area. Now, if all you have is a stove or a wall-mounted oven, you can do it there too. But just be aware that you're going to have gases that come out from either the stone or the insulation or the fiberglass, whatever you're using. Okay, and you open a window, install a fan to blow the air through the kitchen or whatever. 
uh, because I don't I don't know anything about these outgasses or if they're toxic or not. I'm assuming they're not, but um, it could be the opposite. So use use this in a ventilated area. Now, there are charts online. You can look up heat treating online. Just um, Google. Uh, let's see, what was a what's a good term? I don't know, just heat, Google heat treating rocks or heat treating flint or heat treating jasper or any other type of material like that. And you'll, you, you'll usually get, get links to websites like Puget Sound Nappers, I think has one, where there's charts of heat treating ranges for different materials. Uh, I'm not going to get that specific. My technique for heat treating is simply to... Uh, Prepare this first, right? Prepare your turkey roaster. I don't think I mentioned that in the beginning. Because you can use, sometimes you can buy these secondhand at thrift stores for like 10 bucks or whatever. Make sure it goes up to 450 or even better if it goes up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Most of them go up to 450. Try to get one that goes up to 500. Okay. What you do is the smaller the flakes that and spalls that go in there the better. Uh, do not uh, heat large spalls. That's one of the rules. Okay? Do not. So break it up and you're going to what I do is I cook it at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours to dry it to do the preliminary drying minimum okay you can do it for 48 hours 72 hours whatever i wouldn't recommend over 72 hours so you put the rocks in heat it at 200 degrees for 24 hours and then you increase the heat to uh, 275 degrees fahrenheit uh, for four hours And then turn off the heat. Cool for 12 hours. Remove. And nap. Now many materials at this low heat are not going to nap. It won't do anything to it. But some materials do respond to this heat. So if it's fine, it can be napped and it does respond, great. If, however, you heated it at a very high temperature and it didn't need to be, it'll break up or have a potential of being overheated. You don't want that. You want the minimum amount of heat necessary to get it to nap efficiently or sufficiently, okay? If it doesn't nap and you're still, it's still pretty tough, you Put it back in, uh, put back in, heat at an increase of uh, 25 degrees, so 300 degrees, four hours, and then repeat. Turn off the heat, cool for 12 hours, and remove a nap. If nothing happens, if it's not good to nap, if you don't like it, put it back in. Next time, 350 degrees. I know that's a jump of 50 degrees instead of 25. You can jump 25 degrees every time. Four hours. Then turn off the heat. Cool for 12 hours. Remove a nap. Still no good. 400 degrees next time. Now what I, what I do is I just turn it up to that heat. Like if I put it in, in my turkey roaster, directly in, fill it all up, and I just crank it all the way up to this temperature here. But you can start by the initial temperature of 275. Let's say you're at this stage here where it doesn't do anything up into at 300 up until 350. I want to cook it at 400, but I don't want to crank it all the way up to 400 all at once. Okay, fine. Start at 125. 
uh, for 30 minutes and then go to 300 for 30 minutes then go to 350 30 minutes and then to 400 for four hours okay same procedure again if it doesn't nap you know after you turn it off go over 12 hours remove a nap if nothing happens you increase to 450 which means you put it back in the oven turn it to 275 wait 30 minutes turn it to 300 wait 30 minutes turn it to 350 wait 30 minutes turn it to 400 wait 30 minutes in this case and then at 450 you cook it for four hours if your oven goes up to 500 your turkey roaster same thing you get the idea okay now if it still doesn't do anything at this level it probably is not going to work it's not heat treatable or you've got something that requires more heat than this I think Novaculite falls into this category I think it might need 600 and uh, uh, there might be another one that I haven't put on the list okay but I know for sure Novaculite uh, usually needs more and I think it's 600 I could be wrong there but you can look that up so this is the procedure okay that I use because I don't go by charts because a lot of times I don't know the material that I'm cooking all right um, sometimes I cook a bunch of batches of different stones all in the same turkey roaster I'll cook for 275 for four hours <clears throat> take it all remove it all nap little bits of each piece take out the ones that nap well and put the ones that didn't nap well back in <clears throat> repeat again take out everything nap a little bit off each one the ones that look good take them out put them back in it's a diminishing process eventually you'll get to know which ones will nap at what temperatures okay and it's it's very also very it's variable depending on your area like if someone in a town 200 miles from here has the same type of rock that I do here uh, for some reason we may have two different heating temperatures for the ideal consistency that we want okay so it doesn't really work to generalize you got to be specific with your type of stone now heat treating and a lot of people miss this part heat treating is on a spectrum okay which means there's a range let's say it's 325 to 350 on a particular stone this is the range where it naps well okay sometimes this range is only 325 to 330 or something like that very tight range sometimes it could be 400 to 600 degrees where it naps you can heat it sometimes you can nap it as little as four hours and it's good sometimes as little as two hours is good but sometimes it requires 16 hours it's good but it's still on a spectrum all right let's say that this is two hours here it's good and you forget it for a few days for a, for the day and it, it cooks at 16 hours and it's still good so it's a spectrum but here it may be semi-gloss and this is high gloss but it naps the same you don't feel any different in any difference in napability so heat treating is on a spectrum it's not a specific temperature that we're dealing with all right and that's why do i mention that it's important to know that because let's say that you find an artifact right you suspect it's heat treated and then you have a, a chunk of flint that has been napped uh, it's a flake and uh, you take a little chip off of this and a little chip off of that and you find that it's very much the same and then you find a, a nodule 
you knock off a piece okay from the same camp or whatever knock off a piece you heat treat it let's say at 350 and it's way too soft way too brittle or something or it breaks up and you go huh it's not heat treated it might be wrong these things might have been heat treated at 300 both of them or maybe this one only and there's barely any discernible difference however the napper liked the difference at 300 so this is a heat treated piece so you see what i'm getting at here right just because let's say you're doing an experimental archaeology and you're testing these things and you treat it at 350 and it's way too brittle doesn't mean this is not heat treated because it could have been heat treated at 300 or even less 275 there's a spectrum and the ancient nappers I assume knew this okay if you're dealing with fire every day and you're dealing with napping every day you're going to find this out that just that little bit of exposure to heat let's say even for two hours can make a difference for you to speed up your process or make it better for you because you're using soft antler or something uh, it makes a difference okay it does make a difference so the thing that's often omitted is the spectrum in which heat treating is acceptable to the napper. Okay. So I hope that clears things up. Uh, this is the main part that I get questions on. How do I heat treat? This is just the experimental way to do it. There are charts online that you can use. I know that a lot of people have used them and have been successful with the charts online. Uh, that's fine. I don't use them because a lot of I've had a lot of failures related to using charts from online. That's why I don't recommend them. But you can look them up if you want. That's fine. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, one more thing. I think it cost me, back when I kept track of this, it cost me $50 a month. If I heat treated every other day, every other day, when I was heat treating a lot of material, and I think I can heat 20 pounds at a time. Okay, so you got to keep keep that in mind. You know, there is an expense related to this operation, and this was five or ten, five years ago, I guess, or maybe more. It could be higher now, depending on your area. So there is some expense in using electricity to heat. Now you can heat on an open fire. There are various techniques. You can bury. Uh, one inch to two inch below your fire. Okay. You can, you can build a fire here right on top of the stones with a one, one inch and two inch it's usually around one inch right and this depth here is also usually one inch you don't want to go really deep just one layer of stone of usually flakes that are flat or you can build a fire over here and then transfer hot coals it looks like a marshmallow <laughs> Transfer hot coals here and not burn. Just transfer a layer of hot coals. Right, that's one way. The way I'm, I've been doing it lately is you can buy these uh, these things where it's a stand, right? And it's for fires. Like you can put your fi fire in the backyard and then there's a cover to this. With a little handle. This goes on top, and it's a, like a screen that goes over. You can buy these at Home Depot or whatever. You can cook rocks in this thing. And what you do is you put the coals in here. You, you know, you start a fire separately, or you can start it within there. I guess it doesn't matter. It just ends up with a lot of ash. If I start the fire in here and let it burn down, there's a lot of ash. But anyway, you can get this going, get the coals going, and then arrange your flakes 
around the outside within this basin around the coals right around the rim so they're exposed to the heat and you get you can get a thermometer and, and see how hot it is it's usually hot enough to cook meat which is going to be around 300 degrees or 400 degrees right so as long as you're within the range between 300 and 400 degrees you're pretty good now these little uh, flakes are going to be spalls right you're going to have a bulb of percussion on one end this is the bulb of percussion on this flake let's say it's a flake and this is a cross section this thick part oops is closest to the coals the thin part is on the on the outside so you arrange them that way okay and uh, i usually do this it takes two to four hours right for the coals to die down um, but i think four hours is good then you can handle these and take them out or you can leave them in there overnight doesn't matter um, but i think four hours you put them you put them next to the coals they're going to heat up pretty fast sometimes you'll have failures uh, this is not as effective as this method here but at least you can do it over an open fire and you don't have to bury it in the ground you don't have to mess up the ground that you're in uh, you can just bring one of these things to wherever you want to set up it doesn't leave any trace and you can heat your stone uh the caveman way <laughs> so to speak okay and in my experience, this works okay. And I'm doing a lot of my own heat treating this way, just so I can get more of a feel for how to do it this way, with in the open air. Um, and I've got a feeling I could even get a fork stick, right, and put a stone on it, a flake, and heat that over open, open uh, coals. Just stick the other end into the ground. And if the fire is hot enough to burn this, it's too hot. If if uh, if it doesn't char it, if it if you don't see any any discoloration, the fire is too low. So it's almost like cooking meat over a fire. You can use the same technique to cook flakes over the fire. And I, I'm going to try this this summer. Okay, I've already done this. I've done four different batches like this. I would say with about. 50% uh, success. So 50% of the flakes that I've done it were perfectly fine doing it this method. Here uh, I get close to an 80% success rate but I just throw everything in usually together. So some of them don't heat treat at all, some of them break up but um, when I'm heat treating uh, I try not to spend too much time doing it or uh, doing small batches that cost me a lot of money. If I do hundreds of small batches, that's a lot of money. So I just throw everything together and I, I try to estimate that or I try to judge which ones will heat treat it at the same temperature. Okay. So there you go. Um, I particularly don't recommend this method here, okay, of burying it. I've, I've tried this twice and both times nothing happened. So either I'm burying it too deep, I'm not getting the fire too hot, or the flakes I was using uh, just by coincidence were not heat treating at the temperatures that the fire achieved, you know? Okay, so anyway, um, this is the way most people online will tell you how to treat, how to heat treat, but I recommend this method here. And I'm going to try this method here where I cook it with a stick or something over the fire. Okay, so I hope that answers the questions. I'll not, I'm going to all point people to this video when they ask me the question in the future about heat treating. And um, in the comments, uh, we can supplement this material and have a complete uh, answer to the question, hopefully. Okay.